I've decided, like, I want to make a new series of videos um, in regards to a back, the background of be, living with a disability and horseback riding. Um, and just share my progress in regards to um, horseback riding and with a disability and make videos of that now um, because I feel like I found my purpose of bringing about some awareness in this area as well. Um, before I used to share, you know, what it was like for me living with debilitating symptoms. But now I want to inspire people more when it comes to uh, living, progressing with some sort of hobby or sport when it comes to having a disability um, and bring about some awareness there because there is so much judgment and lack of understanding when it comes to the horse world and in general uh, with regards to a person riding and that has a disability. Um, because a lot of people tend to try to fit us in a, some sort of box of us being totally uh, normal um, and expecting a lot when it comes to when you're learning uh, horsemanship or to uh, even ride or handling a horse. Um, even though we have limitations, we can be extremely successful. Um, and I've seen it myself as well, but it just may take us a little bit longer. Um, but um, a lot of people get comments, well, you shouldn't you shouldn't pull on the horse's mouth this way, or you shouldn't do that way, or just, and they can be mean about it, you know, um, when you're just learning and when you're just starting to progress, and when it's harder for you because you, you are disabled and have a disability. Um, so it may seem like you're making all these lousy mistakes and you are facing judgment regards to that um, as well. Um, we all had to start somewhere and we all had to learn somewhere. You know, it's not, it's not an automatic thing, automatic thing where you um, just catch on and you just know everything. <laughs> it takes a lot of time and practice and it may even take years. Um, so it's a lifelong journey, basically. So, in regards to my disability, I was genetically tested and I found out last year in March after two decades of symptoms um, that I have a rare genetic mutation in the CACNA1A gene and it causes uh, different symptoms. So a lot of it's mainly neurological and this can be cerebellar ataxia and even episodic ataxia type 2 which is where a person experiences these sporadic episodes or bouts of severe discoordination, imbalance, um, slurred speech and all these neurological symptoms may sometimes include seizures or whatever, but over time it damages the cerebellum, which is located in the back of the brain that's responsible for motor control, coordination, and balance. So with this slowly worsening damage of the cerebellum over time, the symptoms over time can become more permanent. So you may notice even when you're not in an episode that you may be stumbling a lot. You may be losing your balance a lot, even though you're not in an episode of your uh, ataxia. That's episodic ataxia type 2. It's associated with being sick, vomiting, and vertigo as well, which is extremely debilitating. And I have that diagnosis. Um, I also have... Um, 
very hypermobile joints. So I'm, I'm hypermobile, really flexible. Um, and I may either, like I've learned that people with CACN A1A gene mutations, I still need to talk to my um, neurologist about this and I plan to, but I, I've learned that people with these genetic mutations can have hypertonia. Um, and associated with them. And a lot of people with this ge genetic mutation can have, in result, have developmental disabilities. They're late to walk, talk, which I was, and have learning disabilities, which I also have. I also suffer from cognitive difficulties. Um, and I've had history diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder, high functioning, learning disabilities, cognitive disorder, and stuff like that, and ADHD. Um, so I had a lot going on. I also believe I have uh, cerebellar cognitive affective syndrome. So it also affects my memory, um, my thinking abilities, my cognitive functioning. Um, I am slower to accomplish things and I'm slower to multitask, if I can multitask at all, um, and slower com to complete tasks. So my, even though I don't visibly look like I have a disability sometimes, I can walk around fine, but I at times use mobility aids. Um, but um, sometimes it's not apparent that I have a disability. So, with that being said, um, with the cognitive uh, dysfunction or whatever, because of my condition, um, I've suffered with severe psychiatric disorders that has put me in the hospital multiple times. I have uh, had multiple hospital visits because of my physical issues, and they ultimately, um, let me go and discharge me from the hospital because they can't find anything really wrong um, because it's a result of my rare genetic condition and that they can't really do anything for it but possibly treat the symptoms I have at the time like my vertigo and nausea. So, um, yeah. But um, anyways, that's a little bit of background about me and my, uh, my condition. Um, now a little bit of background about me and Waylon. I have an American saddlebred horse. Um, he is fantabulous. Um, when I first got him though, he was uh, very spooky. He was a little bit high strung. Um, and he's a very energetic horse. But at the same time, he can have a calm disposition. So it's kind of that sweet little mix of the two. Um, even though he can have a calm disposition, he could be a little bit yancy, high strung and energetic um, and a little bit spooky and have a lot of anxiety. Um, so I have a, a calm supplement just in case he's a little bit too much to handle. Um, and it kind of like mellows him out a little bit um, as well. Um, but he's a very fantabulous horse. Uh, he's an American saddlebred. He's about 13 years old now. Um, I got him when he was 11. I got him October of 2019 and we started our fantastic journey together. Um, but he was like really spooky when he would when I would ride him in like a small area before I even, before I was even suggested a calm supplement. Like, um, he would just tremble and shake with me on him. I thought he would bolt and just, I would fall off and stuff. So I, I have debated, debated on, uh, getting rid of him, selling him or whatever, but it would break my heart and I would be upset over it. Um, because I feel like he's my soulmate horse. And we have learned like a lot from each other. Um, in the past two and a half years I've had him, 
we have grown together. We have extremely bonded together. I'm not into any competing, competitive sport or nothing. I'm not into shows at this point. I'm learning and I just like to enjoy it and kind of like have fun with it and kind of like keep practicing to advance my skills in horsemanship, even on the ground and riding. Um, so I'd like to uh, continue with that at this point. Um, and um, see where that goes. But um, now there's been like this major difference in how we handle each other. You know, he used to be real testy with me, hesitant, and kind of like refused to do things when I'd ask him to. He would just like stop in the middle of a round pen and I'd really have to try to get him to go. Just kind of like these obnoxious little things that he doesn't even do anymore. So <laughs> I've had to use a crappie or like a little whip thing um, quite a few times at first, but now I don't even use it. He listens pretty well to me um, these days. And now it's, I'm reaping the rewards. We both are, and we're just having a good time now. Instead of <laughs> uh, being frustrated with each other and uh, like um, going through the hard work of um, learning from each other. So that's just real great. Now he could like rock, uh, walk and trot through a large pasture um, by ourselves without even needing anyone by our side um, because before he would be real spooky he would not want to do it you know it's just a major difference from where it was before to where we are now um, so I think we've grown to really trust each other and to like bond with each other um, as well I've uh, Learned a lot from him. I've had a lot of first experiences on him. Um, I learned uh, this past year of uh, English riding, and there's been such a huge progress there um, as well. Um, but I'm still, I still got a lot to learn. Um, so I just started that. Um, it was very difficult at first, but now we're we're doing it with ease now, more ease. I've ridden Western like my entire life, so I figured it was time to jump into something different and new and to learn different. And I really fell in love with the English style. So that's like my favorite at this point. Um, but I still continue to ride Western as well. But um, yeah, um, we've tried small jumps, nothing major and crazy at this point um, but plan on working uh, a lot more with things this coming season um, so yeah that's my little introduction um, I hope you enjoy it um, if you have a disability and you ride horses please join my new Facebook group called disabled horse riders unite I'm also on YouTube um, as well, and I have Instagram. Um, my YouTube channel is Living with Cacna 1A, C A C N A 1A, and Hypermobility. So, um, those are the main uh, things you can follow me on. Um, I also have a couple of uh, Facebook pages with uh, living with uh, CAC and A1A as well, CAC and A1A Warrior, and um, living with a rare genetic CAC and A1A, something like that. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video.